Okay, Amazon Japan tool order. Ordered on March 4th, delivered on March 9th, five days. Box is in really good shape. Nothing is busted or broken open. So it looks good. This is a big order. Got a lot of items in here. Let's see here. All right, so, whoa, this is way, okay, this is way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. All right, I'll take all these items out. We got a couple of socket sets, some wire strippers, some more blades. Let me take all these items out and we'll take a look at them. This is going to be a fun one. Okay, we've got 12 items. Um, a couple of these items are really interesting. Lots of things to say about them. I'm going to have to break this up into a couple of other videos doing specific reviews on some of these items. This Ryobi blade is one that I got. It's just a sharp blade. I used it. I did a test on some cardboard, which is why the words Ryobi and Made in Japan are worn off of the blade. And this blade gets hot in a reciprocating saw in cardboard, but works really nice for cutting up big, heavy, thick cardboard. This item was a little expensive. It was $11.02. I would not buy this one again. It's too expensive for what it is. Wanted to check out one of these Ryobi blades. In my previous Japanese tool haul video, I was pretty excited about these reciprocating saw blades in that they are basically Japanese pole saws. They don't have the teeth bent to the left and the right and I wanted to try it out some, some more of these because I was so impressed with them. And this one, I'm not so impressed with. It's, it's thin, it's a 0.8 millimeter. Other blades are um, typically a little bit thicker when they have this tooth pitch. Nice, but this, one's, this one is a 0.8 millimeter thick blade. I'm gonna compare the thicknesses on some other blades. I'll show you that in a second. So Z brand is what I referred to these in the last video because I didn't know what this brand was. Thank you to a viewer who commented, Duke FX. He said, this is Zetsaw. Well, thanks Duke FX because that's what I needed to be able to Google and find the website of this brand. And then I was able to find their entire reciprocating saw product line and then I was able to figure out that they have fine pitch, medium pitch, two types of medium pitch, and a coarse tooth pitch reciprocating saw blade. I wanted the fine pitch, so I knew it was gonna be called a PVC blade. So then I was able to find it on Amazon Japan, and it is fine tooth. It's a 0.6 millimeter, which is considerably thinner than the other pruning blade from the same brand at 0.9 millimeter. The Ryobi blade was $10. The Zetsaw blade was $5. And this SK11 blade, it was $7.42. Now this is a jigsaw blade, SK11, made in Japan. And I ran into a problem with this blade when I was doing some testing with it because of the weight, so it's a millimeter thick, so thicker than these other reciprocating saw blades, but just as the picture shows the teeth going pretty much all the way up to this point right here, is how it was, that's how it comes, and the problem is it doesn't fit inside a typical American jigsaw because of the guard that is on the jigsaw. It hits this guard, and I mangled up this guard even after I had taken this to the grinder and ground off some of the teeth to get it to fit inside the tool. And I didn't grind off enough and I mangled up this guard on here. 
But the other problem is, is that it fits in there and it's so thick from front to back that you barely have any room on the toe of, to even get on the material. So these are not a good fit for American tools unless you've got one that doesn't have a guard. My other Bosch jigsaw that is corded, um, this also did not fit in that because it has the same type of guard on it. I wouldn't buy this again not because it's not a good blade, it just doesn't work in American style jigsaw tools. Okay, so let's take a look at the Japanese made Wise brand. This magic adapter is just a set of plastic bushings that fit inside this tool. And what this is, it's just a bar for leverage. I, I don't know what they call it. I don't know what how they describe it. Uh, but all it is, is it's a heavy bar for extra leverage and you use it primarily for hex keys, but you know, you don't want to mar up your hex keys, putting something on here to get extra leverage like uh, pliers or even, even metal on metal. So then they offer these bushings that accommodate different sizes of hex keys and uh, there's one size that has a smaller hole in it and one size that has a larger hole in it so six millimeter five and four probably is this one and then the three two and a half and two millimeter is probably for this one so those are the two different sizes and the way it works is you can put that in here and in here and they just kind of friction fit together and then they don't fall out. And then you can use this to get extra leverage on that hex key when you put that into some type of a uh, device or equipment and you're really trying to get some torque on it with this tiny end. Now you can get this on there and you can torque that. Um, with the bushings in here, it closes up this end so you can't really get anything in there and so it, it can get a little in the way um, these do fit on the end of course but they fall out so they don't they don't friction fit or snap in there with any kind of a detent or anything like that they fall right out of the end um, they just friction fit together so they only stay in when they're like this. And then the way the bore does not go all the way through the handle. It feels very solid. It's a very heavy tool. Um, they've got a they've got a bore on this end. All right, that's that one. Okay, let's take a look at this Tone set that I got. And this one is a low profile pass through very similar to my Vera set that I reviewed before. So this Tone set, I was a little surprised that it's a plastic case because it looked like it was maybe metal in the uh, pictures when I saw it on Amazon. So I was a little disappointed that the case was plastic, but it's okay. It's a good case. Um, can't really rip on that. Um, it was just, you know, I made a mistake, mistake of perception or whatever. So there's what's inside of it. And then I wanted to show this compared to the, this is the ratchet for the Vera set. Look at how similar that is. When I go on the Vera website and I look up the data sheet on this Vera ratchet, the country of origin on this is Taiwan. Tone doesn't really say where this is made. It doesn't say it's made in Japan, so I'm guessing it's made in Taiwan because these ratchets are nearly identical. They feel the same in their ratcheting tension. They, the switches feel the same. They're, they're very, very similar in the way that they're machined. Uh, the size lengthwise is is identical the only difference is the shape of the handle and basically polish and some laser etching so 
So that's that's interesting. Other than that, they're basically the same type of sockets and uh, everything. So this is 11 millimeter. The Vera set does not have the 14 millimeter, so now I have a 14 millimeter. I also have this interesting little adapter that fits in here and converts this pass-through 11 millimeter socket wrench into a quarter drive socket wrench. So that's kind of an interesting little adapter to have. And I get an extension that has the 11 millimeter drive on the end. And it also has a, a quarter inch square here so I can stack it. You know, it fits, you know, it fits quarter inch this way. Okay. And then it also fits this 11 millimeter drive like this. So that's an nice little accessory to have that'll work on both the Vera and this Tone set. And that is all I have to say about that. Fun little, fun little socket set there. Okay, let's look at the, let's look at this wire stripper. This is a pretty interesting product by Vessel. Let me get some of this other stuff out of the way here. So this is a pretty interesting product by Vessel. It is patented by Vessel and their part number is 3200 VA-1 made in Japan and it is a wire stripper for commercial, we call it Romex wiring here in the States. Okay, this, this is metal. I don't know what this says. Um, this handle is metal. All of this and this is metal. But this bottom part here and this handle are plastic. Okay, so that's the way that that's made. It has an adjustment here for the size of the wire the gauge of the wire, it doesn't, it's just one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't necessarily translate into anything specifically American. Um, and I've had mixed results with this. I did some testing. I'm going to do, I have to do a more specific in-depth review on this. There's a lot to say about it. There's a lot to show you as far as its performance. So stay tuned for a video specifically about this Romex style wire stripper. Okay. And then we've got th this last item here is the Annex AOA 19 S3. Now this is a product that I have been kind of researching and stalling on buying for many months. Um, there's a few different kits like this for sale on Amazon Japan. I, I kind of tried to went back and forth thinking about how useful is it going to be. Some of the sets were really expensive, like $200. This one was $116 and this one was the most economical for what you get out of this kit. I should probably also mention, sorry, I hate it when I go back and and backtrack, but this was $49, this item here. This Annex Offset Adapter 19BA, which is bit adapter, this was $16.06. And then these two adapters that fit into this system were $13.53 each for a 3 8 drive wobble and a half inch drive wobble adapter. All right, let's take a look at this. So this is the Annex Offset Adapter. It is, it is a fairly heavy tool. 
there are no ball bearings in these uh, rotating pieces here. So you use a hex drive or a 19 millimeter socket here and you drive that with an impact and you get an offset so that you can uh, threaded rod. These are all pass-through sockets. You can see that they're pass-through sockets. So threaded rod, um, you know, solar installations where you're using a lot of that C-channel stuff and you got to get inside a C-channel and you got to tighten a bolt down inside that. This, this is kind of, that's kind of the intended purpose, a more industrial production type purpose. Uh, you know, it's, it's marketed toward more than a DIY type of a market. And uh, these are rivets, so uh, not intended to be taken apart. And, um, you know, there's a little bit of friction here because there's no ball bearings in this. Uh, comes with some extra retaining rings. All these have a little rubber o-ring that gives you a friction fit that you know the socket doesn't fall out but they also have a machined groove for a retaining ring for just extra security and not losing this if you're just working and putting in a lot of these in a, in a production environment, a solar installation or whatever, and you're just worried about having these sockets fall out and losing them, so they give you this retaining ring. Okay, and then this, of course, fits in here and gives you the ability to adapt it to um, a power tool. The problem is, is that it's made with that Asian 19 millimeter offset on this anvil. So it doesn't actually lock into this American tool because the American tools are expecting a nine millimeter offset on this anvil side of the bit. Um, so this doesn't actually lock in to the American uh, the American power tools like this, but that's okay. I can probably figure out a way to um, take a grinder and cut something off and, and, and get something on here that'll, that'll work and do the same job. So it comes with that and also comes with a regular wrench. 19 millimeter is what this drive is here. Just any 19 millimeter will work and it's so you've got this pass through and I went to Lowe's this morning because Lowe's makes a type of a pass through socket kit set and I don't know if it's a 19 millimeter drive like this because it'd be nice if I could find some SAE size pass through sockets that would fit in this and then it it comes with the little hex key for this. This has a hex key in it right here. But because I'm a tool snob, now I'm going to use my PB Swiss uh, 1.5 millimeter hex driver to loosen that up. And then you can put a uh, hex in here. Hopefully you can see that. And, uh, you know, pretty much any any length anything it doesn't matter if it's Amer oh sorry nope sorry I said any length no it actually bottoms out here it I, you can't push it all the way through oh that's interesting I wonder why they did that so it so it bottoms out there and then the set screw so then the set screw is going to be a little bit weird well I can still let me see here I think I can still get it yeah it does it does set onto that okay so it does it does work and of course it works perfectly with uh, something with an Asian style anvil on it just yeah works perfectly in that situation but does work for
for other things. Very strong magnet on here. And uh, that's the hex quarter inch uh, hex drive adapter for that system. Uh, now let's look at some of these adapters. So this is the AOA 19BA. So Annex, did you know Annex stands for action, nice, and excellent? <laughs> yeah, it does. And then AOA is Annex Offset Adapter. 19 is the 19 millimeter drive, and BA is bit adapter. So what this is, it's a bit adapter for quarter inch hex driver bits that the American size anvil fits in it as well as the Asian size 19 millimeter offset. And then I've got these 3 8 and half inch wobble socket adapters for using my own sockets. So this is the 1984 and 19 adapter 3 and adapter 4. Okay, so there's adapter four and adapter three. So that's adapter four, that's adapter three. You get one retaining clip in each package, and then you can use, okay, so you can use this like this. So we got the 9 16 Seems to work just fine on there. Half, and of course we got this. We can use. Okay, um, I'm going to do a separate in-depth review because uh, I I want to test this out on a couple of things. So stay tuned for those uh, more in-depth review videos from some of the items in this unboxing. So that's my. Amazon Japan tool haul. I think this is number five. Thank you for watching.